Alrighty, so let's have a look at what happened there. So we're finished now with the undercoat and wash. So we'll have a look now at the result of the wash over the top of the undercoat. And there it is. So as you can see, the ink has run into the spaces on the ship that we want it to run into. And it's essentially done all the black lining for us. Even on the sides there, all these cast mounted guns. You can see now that those are all now blacked in. The tops of the uh, funnels, sides of the funnels. I'll show you again with Bouvet. Yeah, you can see those portholes now really clearly. And the anchor chain. So that's going to take uh, a lot of work off our table. And all of that, all that heavy lifting has all been done with a spray can and a wash. That's the kind of painting I like doing. Very little effort whatsoever for maximum results. Um, yeah, we <laughs> say what you might about that uh, that kind of attitude. In this case, it uh, it has reaped results. All right, so on to step number three, and that is the use of this lovely stuff. Oop, hang on, there we go. Vallejo, medium sea grey. All right, again with this tiny little brush. Um, uh, I've already put a dab of paint on that. I always use a palette of some kind. Um, you know, use what you works best for you. All right, so I'm just going to move this around a bit. There we go. So we want to get all of the paint off the brush almost. Now it's crazy, right? You just put a whole bunch of paint on the brush, and now we can take it away again. Yep. All right. I'm going to try and do this without really being able to see it because I've got the miniature underneath the camera rather than where I can actually see it so I can paint. Wish me luck. All right. So I am brushing downwards and downwards only because I don't want to cover up all that lovely detail we just put in. And as you can see, again, the effort level is low. The skill level is even lower. It's just that technique and a bit of preparedness to get it wrong and fix it up later. So if I get this wrong, I can always come back with the darker grey or the seam sea grey mixed in with black. and fix up whatever I mess up. Alright, so that seems to have worked. And I go swap sides. Do it again. Might swap sides of the brush as well. All we're doing now is taking those lovely ridges marked on the miniature deliberately for these purposes of grabbing the paint. Okay, so it looks like the paint on the brush has worn out. So I have to go back to my palette and then go wipe most of that off again. Alright, let's make sure this time I'm in camera. Here we go. I'll test how much paint I got by putting it on my skin. It's all water soluble, so it's not a problem. Here we go again. So as you can see, I am brushing downwards. That's all I'm doing. And all I'm trying to do is get the brush to pick up on those edges, the angular edges. And apply a lighter coat. And this is doing essentially what the sun does. I'm just going to move this so I can see it better and the camera can see it better. The sun picks up on the edges of things, and that's sort of all we're doing. Talk amongst yourselves. Oop, 
Try not to bang the camera while you're using the brush. Twice in a row. Alright. Okay, so I think that's going well. That's going really well. So on camera, once again, dipped into the palette. Oh, bang the camera. Wiping most of the paint off the brush. Now I'm going into the middle to grab some of that stuff in the middle. Just taking the brush over the miniature. And because of the amazing work and detail that Andrew has put into these things, I have to do very, very little as a painter. I'm not having to paint any of these lines in. The wash is uh, there, it's in the cracks. The undercoat has formed a base coat. All I am doing is adding those lines that the sun catches. Don't worry so much about the funnels because we're going to come back and black them in. The same for the mask. I must say, Bouvet is even better when it, you can pick up on that. There's extra details because those lines are in it. All right. Well, I'm going to declare that officially base coated. Um, Pretty hard, huh? Um, so, with this one, there's not much in the way of deck. So there's deck there, there's some deck in amongst these boats, but by the time we paint in the boats, we'll lose that deck. There's a little bit of deck there. Oop. Indicate things on camera. Uh, and then there's, of course, a little bit of deck right in front of that gun turret, but most of the gun will uh, cover that. And then there's just the deck at the bow. Um, so there's not much left to do. We're going to black in the funnels and the masts. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll paint in the guns. Um, I'll show you how to do that, and then we'll, we'll glue those down. Okay, let's go over to the Mighty Mac. Do the same thing again. Now, we're going to go a bit higher and come back with another... Um, uh, lighter grey for the Mighty Mac because we want the German ships to just be that little bit brighter at the top. Okay, again, coming down on the detail. Don't come up. Excuse me, just brush down. That's it. Just like that. Because the wash is already in there, it's like uh, there are already two coats of paint on this and all we're doing is adding sort of a highlight coat. And of course, once you put the deck in there, if you think the miniature looks a bit dark, you don't need to worry. Once the deck's in there, um, it raises the colour of the miniature anyway. So once again, I'm just catching the, the edges. Now... Most of the stuff that I'm brushing at the moment will be covered by the edge um, decking. Don't worry too much about that. Okay, so we don't want to get too much on the sides, obviously because we want the sides of the ship to be a bit darker than the superstructure. Turning it around. Big brush, that's the secret here, lads. Big brush. The great thing about this painting in inverted commas that we're doing right now is we're not actually having to actually do any painting. We will have to come back and do some painting, I assure you. This is a painting tutorial, there will be some painting <laughs> at some stage. Uh, but for the moment, all we are doing is dry brushing. This is actually a very big miniature. Uh, and uh, as I said before, I am putting probably a lot more 
on this than I would put on other ships. I'm doing it because of the way the Germans did their ships. The superstructure I'm paying a lot more attention to than I probably would of other ships. Because this brush is so big, I'm having difficulty in getting it underneath the camera and underneath the light as well. So, sorry for um, vision isn't as good as it could be. Talk amongst yourselves, play your favorite theme music. Uh, I think we're kind of done. There's more to see now. Um, there's real dark depths and then there's real light highlights at the top. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Do you really want me to go on and do two more miniatures or do you want me to skip through? Uh, it's going to be more of the same stuff. So I'll leave it up to you. I'm just going to paint these other two. <laughs> when I say paint, dry brush these other two. Um, these are the Austro... Oops, sorry, Austro-Hungarian. No, the Ottomans. Yeah, Ottoman protected cruisers. And I'm going to do this as well. So, whoop. unless you want to watch me do these the same way that I've just been doing the other ones, you can skip on ahead. Um, and then we'll move on to the next stage. Which will be doing the deck. And I really, and out of all of this, I think that when it comes to painting, the deck is the entire miniature. Like, this is fun. I'm enjoying this. Um, it's not hard. And the results are excellent, which is exactly what you want. But um, when it comes to the deck, uh, that's when you're probably going to use bad language. And that's, I think, probably where most of the job is, it, is the deck. Because um, we are going to find it impossible to paint the deck without painting over some of the stuff that we've done today. Because that's just the nature of the beast. And then I'll show you, uh, not to despair, I will show you how to fix up um, errors that, well not errors, but you know, uh, painting over the stuff you've already done with the deck color because you didn't want to do that but you did it anyway because sometimes you just have no choice and I will talk you through that decision making process another one down alright so I'm doing four I won't bore you with another miniature There's a bit of paper at the bottom of this one that's because it's stuck to the paper with all that um, wash it head on it. That's not a problem because I'm going to soak it in warm water anyway to get it nice and uh, with the plastic nice and relaxed. So when I stick it to the perspex bases, it sticks flat. Yep, so always you need, I mean, what's the size of this brush? I don't even know. Cool, it doesn't say. Makes it easy, doesn't it? Oh, it's Italian. Va bene. But yeah, it's a big brush. There you go. There's the scale, it's the same size as my thumbnail. So when you go to your hobby shop, all you have to do is ask for a brush the same size as Ben's thumbnail, and you've got it all sorted out. All right, there we go. That's the dry brushing stage. Um, I'll pause for a sec, and then I'll go grab some white and mix in some white, and we'll come back and finish off uh, the Mighty Mac. Alrighty, so here's the white paint. This time it's Army Painter, and I, oh, of course, make sure it's matte white. Uh, you will come unstuck with anything that's not. Anytime I'm in a hobby store, I always grab a pot of white paint, black paint, and medium sea grey. Okay. I, I'm using a plastic bag here as a palette. Uh, just use whatever it is that you've got handy. Uh, better. 
a plastic bag because the water doesn't seep into it and dry the paint out. That's a concern because where I live, the air is dry. If you live somewhere where it rains a lot, then you might want to consider using paper for dry brushing. Okay, so all I'm going to do is mix in a little bit of that white into the grey and create a lighter shade. And then I'm going to do what I did last time and get rid of most of it on a piece of paper. And this should actually help when you come to the paper you can see the actual shade difference because I've used this area before it has the old shade on it so I can actually see how high a highlight I'm going by mixing over the top of the old highlight alright so back to the Mighty Mac back to knocking the camera with your brush alright so this time the coat will be a lot lighter and I'm aiming just for the upper superstructure I really want to want to you avoid getting this brush on anything lower both the uh, Kaiser Lichet Marina and the Royal Navy painted their funnels uh, especially when there were multiples of the same class at sea for recognition purposes um, so you could put some color on the rearmost turret of this if you wanted to I'm gonna leave it raw alright well I'm pretty happy with that I might just do a run or two over some of the other stru superstructure to give it a final light highlight just down the middle now that most of the paint's off the brush so that's just one shade higher Yeah. so remember the other thing about miniature painting is that uh, you can't go woohoo at any stage until it's, done. <laughs> it's actually done um, uh, so you know you've got to stick with the process it's a process and until the process is complete you can't expect to jump up and down and go how wonderful a painter you are you really do have to finish all of the steps to get the results um, don't stop halfway through believe me it's not worth it you put in all the effort you bought the paint you got the minis go the whole hog There we go. That's fantastic. Still can't get over how good that many is. <laughs> okay, that's it. That's uh, that's the dry brushing session done. Um, I hope you've you've learned something useful. Um, yeah, go find yourself a really small brush like this one. Um, and uh, the next time I come back with the next part of the video, we'll go on to the worst part of the job altogether, and that's actually having to paint the deck. Take it easy.